channel <laughs> it is sunday that is uh my day and we are playing ace attorney dual destinies as per usual um my cat is yelling at me because he's upset <laughs> uh welcome back to the daring player squad channel we're playing this game we left off where uh we left off uh at we started in the middle of a ma in the middle of a court case with not knowing anything and then now we are on to the investigation of um What's his name? Solomon Starbuck. Starbuck. Solomon Starbuck. Uh, we're trying to get him uh, acquitted. Not acquitted. He's, yeah, is it acquitted? Yeah. We're trying to get him free from this dastardly plot to frame him for murder of his friend and... Uh, his friend and... Uh, what's his face's name? Apollo's best friend. Murder. Murder! So as usual, it is a conundrum. As you can see, also on the bottom end, we have a new kind of donation goal here. This 500 is going to go towards building a better PC because, um, yes, a few weeks ago, our P the PC was having some problems where it was shutting off randomly. So, um, I went with the uh, nuclear option at the end of all things and, uh, just bleached the system, uh, uh its operating system and reinstalled it and it seemed to work out fine. I don't know if that's going to keep up. I have a sinking sensation that only mended uh, an issue that was occurring, uh, that was only being exasperated. Uh, sorry, it, meant only meant, it only mended an issue that was exasperating uh, an issue behind the scenes. So hopefully uh, I've bought some time with this PC to uh, kind of like squirrel, them, squirrel up the money I need uh, and... Uh, buy whatever pieces that need to be replaced and whatever market is and hopefully i'm not i don't have to pay like five times like five times over up the ass for like a, a decent a new gipu gipu <laughs> gipu <laughs> also i am dead judge yeah, yeah. i've uh, made all the um all the stream avatars free because uh, i just like having them there for bunsies uh, i'm hoping to make maybe add a couple new stuff um to make things more interesting, like a rabble button. So whenever like there's a rabble going on, you could do a command called rabble, and then all the all the uh, all the people in the all the people in the the stream avatars can be like rabble, 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 rabble. <laughs> so yeah, um, you can see a lot of little run yeah <laughs> run cycle. Debtor, thank you so much for your 40 Ooh, yeah. months of subscriptions, bruh. Thank you, thank bruh. you, thank you. Bruh, bruh. Thank you so much uh, for your ongoing support. Uh, I'd also like to mention with your ongoing support, uh, the more you donate in bits and stuff, the more the um, the coffers grow, and we can quickly start pumping out some sick, uh, sick merchandise. Uh, all the money coming in from like bits and from subscriptions all go into making that stuff. Uh, mm. As well as like buying games for everybody when we play team streams and stuff. Mm. So, Valheim would not have been possible without you! Yes. Ooh. Ooh. No, that's not, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this 500 don donation thing is just there um, for specifically making sure this PC gets the TLC it needs to keep going and provide myself and Joyce uh, streaming, uh, Apex streaming superiority. <laughs> <laughs> uh, without further ado, let's carry on with the. The investigation. First day of investigations. Uh, uh, about the case. So you have no memory at all of the incident. Who's my some guy named? Uh, I'm so ashamed. My memory at the time is black and cloudy. It's strange you don't remember a thing. Are you sure you didn't take one of those anti-anxiety pills like they said at the trial? Uh, what was that? That is the reverb button. Just click the button, Joyce. It might be better for you. You got it all wrong. I 
I told him during the abyss. Oh, I can't remember the voice. What's the voice for this one again? Uh, was it not just. Just constipated Sephiroth? Yeah. Oh, yeah. David Duchovny? Uh, uh, then, yeah, but then he would got, like, he got super chipper. He had to change his voice. Hold on. Um. <laughs> Reaver, but these lips smacking. Yeah. You got it all wrong. I told him during the investigation, too. I don't know anything about any drugs. I never took any medication, I swear. It is true, I developed a... What? The reaver plot. Thank you. It is true, I developed a fear of space because of what happened seven years ago. I'm gonna need that robot voice a lot in this case. Ooh, yay. And I was taking medication secretly every now and then when my anxiety caught me out. Having a fear of space is not something an astronaut can brag about, you know? Oh, so that so-called Hat One Miracle? That must have been a terrifying experience. But I'm still an astronaut at heart, come what may. I would never take drugs that might- Oh, hello, cat. Oh, this is my kitty. Friendly George. I would never take drugs that might impede my performance just before launch. The launch meant everything to me. That's more certain, th that's more certain than this theory of relativity. He seems like a completely different person now. This is the face of the astronaut I know. But the tranquilizers were found in your system! Uh, uh, yeah, see, that's the thing. I don't know why. I'm going to war. But you didn't take any of them. Then maybe someone slipped them to you? Exactly! That's what I thought. Must have been the real. It must have been the real culprit. My medication was in my locker. Anybody could. Oh, that, I have to. He has to switch between like super upbeat and like constipated, mm. constipated Sephiroth. What did I choose for his upbeat voice? I don't know. Someone remind me. What was the upbeat voice? Do I check the chat? I think I missed something. Some folks. Oh, uh, chat said. Paul said he saw a small streamer get uh, broken the other day. Someone dropped a hundred gift subs on them. And they were a community regular, so they knew it wasn't a it wasn't a troll. Well, oh, that's, nice. that's nice. That's nice. It's good to see small streamers get their bag. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> All that good good old fashioned support. I too would like to have someone drop a hundred gift subs on yeah, our channel. Please. Someone that isn't gods. wayward. I'm, 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 <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that she shouldn't do it. But she's spent enough on us already. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm a little tired. Uh, I had a lot to eat and uh, little children to deal with. <laughs> uh, pfft, what's his voice? Uh, God damn, I thought I had that voice and now I'm forgetting. I meant, uh, I'll, just, I'll just keep it I'll just keep it more upbeat, David Duchovny. <laughs> yeah. My medication was in my locker. Anybody could have gotten their hands on it. Maybe the real culprit also planted the detonator switch in your pocket. Yeah, that's gotta be it. I've been fra- uh, I've been framed. I'll say. Even- they even managed to plant your prints on the switch before slipping it in. It's a real possibility. Do you remember anything else that night- uh, do you remember anything else that might be relevant? Anything at all, no matter how small. Like, how about the murder weapon, for example? Knife. I think it came from one of the Space Center's utility kits. Utility kits? Yeah. Staff who worked on machinery are, uh, machinery a lot are given these special toolkits to use. All the technicians have them, so I doubt you could prove whose knife it is. Alright. It is a utility knife. What's the joke on that? What's the what's the pun on Hat One Miracle? Oh no. Hat trick? As I recall, your last trip in space was seven years ago, right? That's right. It was a pretty rough experience. During that mission, we had all kinds of problems with the craft. You did? What kind of problems? Power failure, oxygen leakage, busted radio, cracked windows, loose control column. The heat shield came off as we were entering the atmosphere. I thought it was I thought it was a goner. Oh my god, that thing was basically just held together by gum and <laughs> gum and popsicle sticks. <laughs> when I managed to make it somehow with the popsicles and ice packs from the freezer. <laughs> 
I just said wow. that. <laughs> wow. I called it. Uh, wow. No wonder he's on anti-anxiety pills. The ship was literally being he's... held together by popsicle sticks. How did that cr vessel pass QA? How did that vessel pass QA? That's... No wonder they dubbed it the Hat One Miracle. It's a miracle you made it back! Space is a boundless place. That's why I continue to capture people's imaginations. The absence of space shows us how insignificant we are in the scheme of things. The truth. <laughs> the darkness just goes on and on forever and ever and ever without end. Else there, nobody was gonna come save me. I was all alone. All alone with nothing, nothing to listen to but the sound of my own breathing and heartbeat. I kept scrambling to make repairs, but I couldn't keep my hands from shaking. An experience like that would make anybody afraid to go up in space. With the experience you had, weren't you dreading this mission? What? No way. Of course not. Even now I want to go up in space so bad I can barely handle it. I want to shake off the Earth's gravity and escape velocity and spin about weightlessness. But you have to admit, it was pretty harrowing. Weren't you even a tiny bit upset? I was afraid. Of course I was. I still am. But space is man's final frontier, an unknown world. The cosmic truth is out there waiting for us somewhere. The cosmic truth, huh? Oh my god, he is, he is Scully. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is out there. <laughs> the truth is out there. I guess there are people looking for the truth in every walk of life. No matter how afraid I am, I'm sure I can manage. If I give in to my fear, I'll never find the truth. As long as I don't give up, I can keep up the fight. One thing's for sure, Mr. Starbuck's passion for space is undeniably the real deal. The victim, Clay Tarrant, he was kind of a... he was kind of like your protege, wasn't he? Well, it wasn't a big exaggerated deal like the Master and Apprentice or anything like that. But Clay did mention me as his mentor. Mentor and the protege. What a combination that must have been. With his, encouragement, with his encouragement, I knew I could get over my fear and go back to space. But now... Clay must have been very encouraging, huh? Yeah, it's funny, really. Whenever I'd hear him shout, You're fine! I almost got the feeling everything really was gonna be just fine. You're fine! Apollo says I'm fine! And you're fine! All of the time, too! And I always feel encouraged, too, whenever I hear him shout it. Yeah, Clayton and Apollo were best buds. They used to come visit the Space Center a lot ever since they were high school kids. One day out of the blue, Clay even told me he wanted to be my protege. Those two hung around the Space Center so much, they were like a part of the staff. One time during Zero-G training, I started to panic a little bit, and the two of them took turns shouting, You're fine! over the radio. <laughs> It was a simple thing, but it was exactly what I needed to hear. So, I'm fine, and you're fine were like Apollo and Clay's secret, secret phrases, huh? Oh. I wish I could I wish I could ask Apollo more about Clay and their relationship now. Speaking of Clay, how do you suppose he climbed down the ladder with you over his shoulder? Uh... Sorry, but I can't even begin to imagine. But he actually did climb down that ladder, so a way has to exist. He's just that swole. Uh, <coughs> from the freedom of space to the walls of a cell. But that prosecutor said the dark night sky isn't half bad through the barred windows. Mm, you're fine! Solomon Soul Starbucks is fine! Everything is gonna be alright! <laughs> It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. fine. Everything if I is say fine, fine you're, you're fine. fine one more it's time. Fine, I'm sure you'll believe it. <laughs> huh? And Athena Sykes is fine. Come on, Mr. Wright. You too. 
you! Do I really have to? Uh, Phoenix Wright is fine. I can't hear you! Phoenix Wright is fine! <laughs> we'll get you back into space yet, Mr. Starbucks. Believe in your own innocence and have faith in us. Apollo believed in you wholeheartedly, and that's good enough for me. I believe in you too. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, both of you. I'll put my faith in you. And I vow to make it back into space. All I need is all I need first is a not guilty verdict. It sure feels nice to reassure ourselves every now and then that we'll that that we're all fine. Hmm. Okay, Mr. Wright. Let's get ourselves let's get our investigation of the space center started. Pronto! Good idea. Let's go. Alright. And then we move uh, to uh, the entrance. The entrance. The entrance. The entrance. Ooh, oh, that's cool. Look at that. Ooh. Take a moment to uh Enjoy the what is that, a tree and an astronaut? <laughs> yeah. I I think it's an alien, like... Oh, like a... Like a oh, yeah, little, you can see little, the... Little yeah. eyeballs up here. That's cute. Mm -hmm. Very Hello. cute. Hello. 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 Wow! I was wondering what kind of place this space center would be. It almost looks like an amusement park of... The, it almost looks like an amusement park of the future. Yeah! Did you even know they... Did you know they even let the public see their rockets up close? Oh, so! Check it out! Look at how brightly the Gyaxa Gyaxa yeah. Gyaxa logo shines in the sunlight above the entranceway. I really dig the stars and rocket motif. Uh, it, it's got going. Gyaxa, huh? Isn't that the new name of the Federal Space R&D program? Yeah, but why the strange acronym? I mean, why is Gya supposed to stand for galaxy? If that were it, then the whole thing would be something like Galaxy Exploration Agency. Which, if you ask me, I'd have abbreviated to Gaxa or even Gaia. Huh. I guess so. I'm assuming there was a lot of uh, copyrights <laughs> around that. They're like, we can't call it that because there's already a pre-existing company. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, I know. Maybe the person who came up with the name just really likes the letter Y. This exchange is beginning to feel oddly like deja vu. Anyway, this place is more than just a research facility. It's also a tourist attraction. Oh, Gyaksa is like JAXA, the Japanese Space Association. Ah. So it's just a weird direct translation that doesn't compute well when you do acronyms. Ah. Ooh, who's this guy? This guy. Oh Whoa, my god. Oh, it's the general. Sir. Okay. Why does he have a Why? segue? Interesting segue. Yikes! Who's this skeezer? What's he want? Alright, voices, everybody. What kind of voice should we give this uh, anonymous general, space general? <laughs> Cast your votes now! I will do my very best to make the worst voice, best voice, worst best voice possible. Worst best. Worst best, as per best the bad worst. boy stubs. What does he look like? He's got this bushy beard. A Russian? <laughs> rush, rush, look above me so and look well. Behold the great power of space science. <laughs> I gotta give him a more older voice. Anybody else have any suggestions on what I should be, uh, how I should be voicing this? His name is fucking Yuri Cosmos. That's true. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty. But you never know. He could be, a, he could be descended from Russian, but raised in China. <laughs> I always find that really interesting when you see, like, white folk that have been raised in China. So they know, like, Mandarin fluently, and they try to speak English, and you're like... <laughs> Also, like, what was it? Search for Red October? Wasn't, like, Sean Connery, like, the whole crew supposed to be, like, Russian or German, but they all speak in their native uh, native English language, native English language and accents? <laughs> so, like, Sean Connery talking in a Scottish voice. 
look upon me and look well. Behold the great power of space shines. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. He should be Sean Connery. <laughs> Anybody else in chat want to throw in their two cents on how what kind of voice I should be giving this guy? I kind of want, I'm leaning towards Sean Connery's Russian, which is not actually Russian, it's just <laughs> Sean Connery. While you're doing that, can I have some Wawa? No! No I Wawa! Like some Wawa! No Wawa! Give me some Wawa! Wawa is meant for the best Wawa people. Alright, just get some. We have a kettle now, just so that we can get some water in us when we talk. Alrighty. Is she here? Let's give him, we'll give him the Russian voice for now. Pardon me, but you are... My glorious name is Yuri Cosmos. I am the director of the Cosmos Space Center. The center of the cosmos! Uh, boss, that was pretty groan-inducing. <laughs> if this person is the Space Center's director, then that means... Aha! So you were the first one to discover Clay's body, weren't you? Hydrates! And who was the first vic first okay. to find the victim? Actually, there are two of them. The Spy Center Director, Yuri Cosmos, and Detective Candace Arm. That is correct. I was honored to be very first man in all of space and time to discover the boat. Wow. <laughs> but this talk of the incident, are you by chance the space police? The space police. You can't tack the word space onto any old thing, you know. Uh, we're Mr. Starbucks lawyers. We're here to investigate his case. You just can't, you can't just stack <laughs> space onto anything. Watch me try. Watch me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Captain. Capita. Salute. <laughs> For the fucking motherland. <laughs> oh, and we're Earth lawyers, by the way. Oh, I see. Yes, I've heard about you. In that case, my esteemed privilege. By my esteemed privilege, I grant you permission to investigate. I trust you are appropriately grateful. Now go ahead. Have at it. I can already tell he's going to be nothing but trouble. Please don't, please don't let him hear you say that. Or he'll see what trouble really is. Let's just be professional and ask him about when he found the body, okay? Yes. Yes. Yuri Cosmos. So, as director, what do you do here at the Space Center specifically? Defend the peace across the galaxy and promote space development in this country. No matter what obstacles stand in our way, we keep going for the sake of mankind. Huh. I believe I used the word specifically in my question. <laughs> Attention all personnel! To your break stations, prepare for a tech. Oh, I get it. You just wander around and tell people what to do in a self-important manner. That is exactly right. Because I am important man and my manner is important. I don't think you understood what I just said. Mr. Wright, this man doesn't get sarcasm. Well, there's bound to be some people like that here in this boundlessness of space. What's that? You want to know what it is that makes me important specifically? Very well, I will tell you. I was the central figure of the Hat One project. You may proceed to be appropriately impressed, but go ahead, have at it! I might be more impressed if I knew what he did for it specifically. Could you tell us what you know about the incidents from the other day? Hmm. Oh, I refuse. Net. <laughs> what? Explaining is a job for common folk, not for director of center of the cosmos. Wow, okay, Jesus. Wow, you're just gonna scoot it's, your way? It just segues over. <laughs> My testimony, which will go down in space history, will be heard in courtroom. What? So does this mean you'll be taking the stand tomorrow? That is correct. I will be most glorious witness in the history of mankind. I'm not sure if he really understands what being a witness is all about. How did this man make commander? It looks like Director Cosmos is the type that only talks about what he wants to talk about. Those... Or rather, Director. 
then let's at least try to ask him about the things he might be willing to open up about. Hat one! The, like the most disastrous fucking mission. <laughs> God. Hello, Lancer. Capitan. Yes. Capitan. The Hat One was a the Hat One was a rocket that was launched into space seven years ago, correct? And despite numerous problems, it somehow made its way back home. So hmm. many problems. I suppose it, it is part of my job to educate ignorant young folk like you. Very well. I will impart to you the complete story of the Hat One project. Shit. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Hat One's noble mission was to collect samples from an asteroid, and Mr. Starbuck was the pilot for that flight. Eventually, the Hat One reached its planned orbit. Then it fucked up bad. <laughs> from where it launched the Hope Probe towards the asteroid belt. From there, the Hope Probe began its long, lonely journey into the far reaches of space. Then after the terrifying struggle, the hit one refer returned safely to Earth. 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 That struggle was when the incident known as the Hat One Miracle occurred. Oh wait, no, that's me. <laughs> that struggle was when the incident known as the Hat One Miracle occurred, right? Correct. And it was truly a miracle. Of course, they just had to turn the ordeal into a movie. Played by God. Tom. <laughs> he was played by Tom Hanks. <laughs> As for the Hope Probe, it eventually arrived safely at destination. It obtained a few samples from the asteroid and returned to Earth but a few days ago. So, what kind of samples are they? What's in them, Joyce? What the hell are you Sorry. doing? <laughs> Sorry. Blast my ears with the audio. Oh my God. The samples were scheduled for a nail analysis in the <laughs> near future. An analysis. Analysis. We haven't had time, but since they just came back the day before the before Terran's murder, regrettably we've had no time to inspect the samples due to everything that had occurred. But this puts our space development program ahead of other countries by several years. That's quite impressive. I guess this guy isn't just a loud mouth braggart after all. In the golden age of space development, our predecessors were successful in bringing back a moon rock back. That is the greatest achievement in the history of Space Center. The public fell in love with space and all of its glorious potential. A moon rock, huh? I, me I remember that being big. Our endeavors with the moon rock lives on in our work with those asteroid samples. I want to bestow new hopes and dreams for the future upon mankind once again. That is my mission, is the man who stands at the center of the cosmos. I hear there's a lot of research into moon rocks and stardust from asteroids these days. <sighs> Thank you. Show us your pets! Show us the pets, skinnies! You want to just finish the story? Sure. They say the result could potentially have a huge impact on all of civilization. I don't know, like maybe a third impact or something. <laughs> Some sort of third impact? <laughs> it's like we're in a new space race with every other country out there. What? Bite your tongue. It's not for anything so base as money or politics. You guys are so base. That's what the kids say, right? Base. <laughs> That's what the kids say. It's all for the brilliant future that awaits Mother Russia. I mean, mankind. And all of, uh, and all for my illustrious mission. With the recent budget cuts, my staff has, tells me that the finances are tight. But I won't hear it. Huh. I guess even a space program has to watch its budget. By the way, you seem awfully knowledgeable about this kind of thing, Athena. Oh god, do you want me to do you want me to do I'm Athena's back. voice? I'm coming back with cats! <laughs> I'm coming back with cats! Huh? Oh well, you know, I thought I'd better brush up for the case! Is that so? Okay, time to bring in kids. Kitty, come on, kitty! Come on, little kitty. Come, kitty kids. Come and take the food. Get the kibble. Ki kibble's right here, dummies. 
Yo, little dummies! <laughs> Come here! Little feet, kid. What's the cat in Russian? <laughs> Kate? <laughs> Come on, it's right here in the mouth. Come here, follow your nose. <laughs> you little shit. Pick them. <laughs> just pick them up. I know, I was. This is more for the after I've. After I've manhandled them. Koshka. Koshka is cat. Oh, thank Koshka! All I know is Cadero. <laughs> Niet. And here is Cat 1. His <laughs> name is George. That is but not this is, George. This is Frederick. How I'm dare sorry. you? You do not even know the name Shut of the up, children. your mouth. <laughs> I don't know why I turned Italian. I'm sorry. <laughs> and so that one is Frederick. And Giorgio Armani is right here. He's Giorgio. Mwah. You're my favorite kid on the city, though. <laughs> okay, little babushkas. They're not really babushkas. I just like saying it. <laughs> Here's some. Okay, well, now you want to come. <laughs> Come here, kit. 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 Eat your kibble here, kit. Without eating the kibble. Don't, don't eat the cord. <laughs> eat the kibble, not the cable. Eat the kibble, <laughs> not cable. <laughs> you can hear his little numbness. Good boy. Okay, a little... Little... Little koshka. Privet. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I will be on my way. As you can see, I am very busy man and very important man. <laughs> Galactic scooter, fire up main engine, max battle speed and engage. That thing is surprisingly fast. I guess we better get going too. You bet. Let's make it so. <laughs> engage. Make it so. <laughs> make it so. Engage. <laughs> Engage. Which which Star Trek is that? Uh, next Make generation. It so? That's Picard. That's Picard. That's Picard. Picard. If Picard. You will. Uh, now that we go to more boarding lounge. The boarding lounge. Oh, that's, Make oh that so. is nauseous. There's Damn. crazy space monster in background. Holy shit. So this is where Mr. Terran was murdered. Yeah, this is the lounge. Let's see that diagram the police made again. Right now, we're in the main building here on the right side, on the third floor. Clay and Mr. Starbuck fled here from the launch pad one after the explosion. Sure did. Sure did. You there, no admittance without express permission. We're Mr. Starbuck's lawyers. We've come to investigate. Sorry, nobody gets in without permission. Not even the police superintendent. <laughs> Can't have Detective Fulbright getting mad at me. So Detective Fulbright is here, huh? Yeah, he's in the launch pad one corridor. Go get clearance from him and then we'll talk. Leave it to me. I'm great at getting intel out of, out of Detective Fulbright. Let's see. What trick should I use on him today? I don't know if I should be grateful or afraid. So, to get to the launch pad one corridor... We just have to go through that door with the blue rocket on it, I think. Wait, that door? It looks awfully familiar. Good eye there, boss. This is the door... Clay and Mr. Starbuck used during their escape from the launch pad. Oh, that's interesting. Wait, what? Yeah, this is the door Clay and Mr. Starbuck used during their escape from the launch pad. But look, you can see, I, I noticed something there. The, did you see the circle? The escape? That, the, 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 there's like a little cap. The crank, yeah. Yeah, it's cranked horizontal. And then this is right, it's vertical. I think it's an emergency open, right? Maybe. Oh, that explains it. And the fingerprint system had been deactivated. So I think we can just pass through. Now, come on, let's go. Come on. <laughs> All right, so we do move, or do we have to observe it? Uh, There's a cat. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There's a cat. Launch <laughs> pad, um, one corridor. There we go. Mm. <gasps> robot. <gasps> we get a robot. There's another cat. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There's a cat. He's so fat, doo -doo 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 -doo. he's fat cat. Are you gonna, are you gonna SMG him? I can't 
can. I don't know if you'll like it. Uh -oh. Sorry, buddy. Let's just try it. Eh. <laughs> Good boy. Give him some He deserved treats for that. Okay, back to right here. <laughs> Cat machine gun needs to be reloaded. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> so this is it, huh? This is the corridor the two of them used in their escape. Yep. This is the only thing connecting the launch pad one with the main building. But no. We are going into the main building. Yes. This is the corridor between. I see the police tape down. Uh, I see the police tape down on the other end. I guess we won't be able to. I guess we won't be looking at the launch pad. After the explosion, this whole corridor must have been filled with smoke. Can I help you, Frederick? He's like, my, I need more. Yeah, I know. He can. He can smell the <laughs> kibble that I still have. You know have. what you gotta do, buddy. No, oh, no, I miss fire, miss fire. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. I beat it. <laughs> oh, okay, well. He keeps hopping back up on the desk and he's like, I need the kibble, mother. <laughs> Just hide it, Joyce. There's nowhere to really hide. And the launch pad itself is probably a sea of flames. There must be some pretty. Uh, that must have been pretty scary for them. Come here. Now, where do you think Detective Fulbright would be? Hey, I think that's him over there. Hmm. What should I do? Which path is the path of justice? Just titties. <laughs> he seems to be lost. That's funny. This corridor is a straight shot. Child, the food is over here. You don't have to. Your whole butt. <laughs> Move the tuckus. All right, get out of here, boy. <laughs> little fluffy little tail. Whole ass butt. Yeah. Huh? Ah! It's you, lawyer people. Welcome to the space center. Enjoying a relaxing day off, are you? Here for a little rocket sightseeing? Uh, we're here to investigate the scene, same as you. Uh, do you have any new info to share? If he acts at all reluctant to give us information, we hit him with a whatever shall we do act. I'm sure he'll fall for it. What is this like? The Loki and Thor? Uh, yeah. Get help? Get help? I don't want to do get help. Get help. <laughs> Got it? Are we trying to catch the unruly family dog here or something? <laughs> I Info mean, on the case, huh? All right. I'm glad. I'm gl I'll gladly share some with you. Oh, what the hell? That was huh? quick. <laughs> what just happened? Folded like a wet paper bag. <laughs> Detective and lawyer seeking truth and justice side by side. I like it. Just take whatever you want from me, you info bandits. I'm in a generous mood today. Just take me over and over again. <laughs> I don't know. There's something weird about Detective Fulbright today. I'm high on amphetamines. <laughs> Yeah, I think that would explain it. Ah, justice! <laughs> well, we need information, so let's just run with it. If you say so. Let's see. The Crimson. The, the crim Crimson. Detective Fulbright, could you give us permission to investigate the crime scene? There's an officer on guard, and we can't get in. Oh, whatever shall we do? That's an easy one. I'll let them know over there to let you in. Investigate to your heart's content. Take a week if you need it. A month even. I, I, uh, shall I have some snacks delivered? One of my men gives a mean neck rub. Okay, that's a little much. Uh, no, that's okay. But thanks. Definitely not the Fulbright I know. Is this Robot Fulbright? Is what this is? Detective Fulbright is acting sickeningly sweet. It's kind of gross, actually. Or do you think he hit his head or something? Who knows? Whatever the case is, it's making our lives way easier. 
You were there at the Space Center at the time of the incidents, weren't you, Detective? That's right! I was here on a security assignment! The police are required to secure rocket launches now? I didn't know that! Um, yes! Well, you know us! To serve and protect! Ha 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 ha! The explosions occurred while I was here on duty, so I started leading the evacuation. He's leaving in a lot of details, but okay. Could you tell us? Could you tell us more about what happened? Of course, a bomb went off on the second floor of the main building. Right after that, the one over in Launchpad One also blew sky high. <laughs> So I immediately instructed the visitors and the employees to evacuate the shelter. Or evacuate to the shelter. Uh, the shelter? That's right! There's an evacuation shelter in the basement of the Space Center. It's there for accidents and emergencies and the like. So, where were you when the first bomb went off? I was on duty on the fourth floor. Hit. It was quite the madhouse, I tell you. Duty. The elevator wasn't working on account of the explosion. And the stairs on the second floor were destroyed, so we couldn't go that way. Then, wasn't it impossible to get down to the basement shelter? No. We lowered an emergency ladder from a, from a fourth floor window and escaped that way. Time works weird. It's Monday over here and still Saturday over there, but in Toronto, the Leafs fans still think it's 1667. <laughs> oh, yes, it is, isn't it? Oh. What, I'm guessing there was a Toronto's game today. Hello, Golden Star Alex. Hey, uh... It was a folding ladder, so it wasn't very stable, but at least it reached the ground. After I secured the ladder, I left to take another look around for any other survivors. Survivors! <laughs> Once everyone else got out safely, I made my way down too and headed to the shelter. Wow, what an ordeal! But climbing down an emergency ladder kind of sounds fun! Thank you for your answers, Detective. They were very helpful. Just a moment! I have some more information to share with you. But don't tell Prosciutto Blackwill, okay? <gasps> I keep saying prosecutor. Oh, wow. And Prosecutor Blackwell usually has you on a short leash, too. Although, isn't it supposed to be the other way around? Yes, but you know, Fulbright's a power bottom, so. <laughs> I would hardly say he's a power bottom. Well, never mind that. <laughs> I thought you should know that there was a witness. Oh, uh, what was his name? Yuri. Could you tell us more about this witness? Sure thing. The witness was a Space Center employee who was on the fourth floor. Okay, maybe do someone else. And while she was climbing down, she looked through the through a window into the third floor lounge. So, she was looking into the crime scene from the outside. Hello, Wayward! Hello, Wayward. That's right! It was just a matter of chance that she saw something important. Not like I know what she saw exactly yet, though. You don't? But that's the most important part, uh, most important thing of all. Ha <laughs> ha, don't you worry. I'll get around to interviewing her soon enough. She should still be somewhere here in the Space Center. You might even run into her. The fourth floor employee, huh? All right, thanks for the info, Detective Fulbright. Gee, you sure are being cooperative. Uh, being cooperative, Detective. A little too cooperative, even. Yes, well, actually, I, uh, Something you can't talk about? Yes, something like that. Anyway, never mind. Don't worry about me. Oh, he's gonna be fired, isn't he? Mm. <laughs> well, I'll be on my way now. Away! <laughs> what was that all about? Something is definitely going on. I'm gonna get get it out of him next time I see him. Okay. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I'm not so sure he'll talk about it, though. Well, we have permission to investigate now. Let's head back to the boarding lounge. Don't worry, Phoenix. I'm gonna use my psychology and I'll break him. I will he will tell me all of his <laughs> secrets. I will break him. 
Uh, there's no... Uh, uh, do we want to move? Observation. I was like looking to observe because I wanted to talk to the robot. Uh, to the... Boarding lounge. Boarding and lounge, yes. Then the, the guy at the door would be like, yeah. Ah, you two! Detective Fulbright has granted you full permission to investigate. He also said I should bring you some snacks or give a neck rub, too, if you'd like. Uh, how about no? That's all right. But thank you for the offer. You sure? I got really dainty fingers. <laughs> oh, God, no. Please don't what? touch me. <laughs> well, time to roll up our sleeves and start investigating. Now, let's see. Where's that diagram again? So, this lounge is on the third floor of the main building. And according to Apollo, this is where he believed a third party killed his friend. Well, let's stop and recap and start looking for traces of this third person, then. You read my mind, Athena. We'll make, a, we'll make that our first priority. There's just one problem, though. This room. It's just so big. <laughs> Don't worry. We can use this to help us. A Space Center pamphlet? For tourists? Yep. Picked it up at the entrance. It, the map inside should come in handy. Let's see. Yep, here it is. A map of the lounge. Barding lounge. This is the door we went through to talk to Detective Fulbright. Oh yeah, that's the door with the fingerprint recognition lock. Well, I guess this map will make things a little easier. Space Center Pamphlet, Editor Current Record. Current Record. Yeah, no more excuses. Let's track down this third person. Wait, there's just one more thing. What's that strange creature moving around outside the window? Oh, oh boss, it's just a holographic image. Oh yeah, I knew that. Ooh, that's a relief. There should be a button somewhere in this room to turn off, th to turn the image off and on, on and off. That's what it says in the pamphlet, anyway. The only reason you're so eager to start is... Uh, the only reason you're so eager to start is so that you can push that button, isn't it? You bet! And what's wrong with that? Let's just look for the button while we're looking for clues! All right, fine. Let's go and... Let's get investigating. Oh, I can't wait to start pushing buttons! <laughs> buttons. Buttons. Yeah, buttons. No. Uh, examine the ropes that indicate how the body was lying. Oh, I forget their ropes. They're, uh... It's not a chalk marking. Not chalk markings. So, this is where they discovered Clay. Yeah, he was already dead when they found him. Let's take a look at the photo. So he was stretched out like this, and... Huh? What's that thing that looks like a thermos? You sure it's not an ice cream maker? <laughs> yeah. What's the... What's the Star Wars, uh... Star Wars, uh container that they always like flaunt around but that's also actually in real life an ice cream maker <laughs> like uh, com conodus or something uh -oh. uh camtono a uh, camtono there we go yeah it's just an ice cream maker, <laughs> but people were just like, that man has a deep lore! <laughs> like, you see it once, some random guy running off with it. <laughs> and he's got like a bajillion, he's got like a bajillion pieces of lore behind him. They just like, I don't understand Star Wars fans sometimes. They just go off. Okay, that's me here. <laughs> he said that it contains asteroid samples. Oh, right. Director Cosmos mentioned something about that too, didn't he? They were, and they were brought back only five days ago by that probe that the Hat-1 launched. I wonder what they look like. Do you think they'll let us see? Let's think about that after we've solved the case, okay? Hmm. What else are we looking at, Joyce? Uh, then... Examine the spinning ball with the chair inside. Oh, funky. No matter how I look at it, all I can think of is tor torture device. I mean, you're not wrong. But I guess it's a training device for getting used to zero gravity. Uh-oh. Athena has an odd glint in her eye. Uh, is she thinking about trying that thing out? I should try and stop her, but I'm afraid she'll just outmuscle me. <laughs> she is absolutely stronger than Phoenix. Hey, Mr. Wright, look at that up there! Oh, what's this? Oh. 
some kind of fragment. It's stuck in tight. Oh, so that's what the glint was all about. That color looks familiar. I think it's part of an oxygen tank. I think you're right. But if that's there, it means Clay's tank ruptured after they arrived at the boarding lounge. So Prosecutor Blackwell's theory that Mr. Starbucks dropped Clay down the ladder must be wrong. This proves that both the astronauts were alive when they reached the boarding lounge. So, Apollo was right. The scene of the murder wasn't the launch pad. <laughs> Way to go, Apollo! Uh, next, examine the door with the satellite dish on it. Uh, nope, you're back. That little red one, yeah. Uh, this fan. So it looks like there are three doors that lead in and out of this room. Well, let's check. Drum roll, please. Ta-da! The Space Center Plamflit. 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 <laughs> Splamflit. <laughs> We're here at this place that says Boarding Lounge 1. He there are three doors. Hmm. Let's call them Lefty, Righty, and Downy. People usually say West, East, and South in a case like this, you know. Yeah, well, details, details. Anyway, take a look at the west door. That door with a rocket icon leads to launch pad one. <laughs> the plimflet, the plimflet. I know because it says here on the map, launch pad one corridor. So that's where we were with the detective. It was filled with smoke after the explosion. Right. Next up, the right-hand side of the map, or east in your world. You mean the entire world? Uh... <laughs> you shut the fuck up, Phoenix. I don't make the rules, bitch. I just live in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the door with a satellite dish icon to signify communication, a.k.a. the control room. Yep, it definitely says control room. Looks like it has another door on the opposite side. They communicate and exchange information with rockets and probes in space from here. <laughs> probes. <laughs> so, the entire center of the space station. Space center. The space center center, if you will. Collective groan. <laughs> Does everybody start to talk to the director Cosmos after they've been here a while? But it seems that they built a new command center on the sixth floor. That's what they used for the Hat 2 mission. So this control room was empty at the time. I've always wanted to see inside of a mission control room. And since we're here... I'd love to do that too. But it doesn't look like we'll be able to. They want to keep curious kids like you out. So the door is protected with fingerprint recognition. Only the director can go through. Lame. Wow, kids like you, Phoenix. Yeah. With that much security, I'm definitely not the one they're looking to keep out, Athena. Says the 16-year-old. <laughs> so, apparently, the lock is also hooked up to the, a backup generator in case of emergencies. All right, the door lock has been added to the court record. Nice. Okay, what about that last door? This lower door. Oh, excuse me. I mean, south door. It leads to the elevators. This is the door we came through when we entered this room, right? Space! Yep. And of course, there was no fingerprint recognition device, so it's open to anyone. But the elevators weren't working at the time due to the explosion. Well, that's about it. How dare you interrupt me? That'll be enough. <laughs> That's enough. Okay, I don't need to hear your shit. <laughs> Thanks. Understanding the layout of the lounge should help us understand the case. That's why I thought we'd better have a good grasp of where the doors go. All right. Well, next, we here. want to change your perspective. T oh, wait. Your perspective was already changed. Uh, examine the area to the right of the elevators. There seems to be some more training equipment. Right. Sorry. So Yes, no. Back. You see that that yeah. The sex swing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the sex swing. Oh yeah, secret sex swing. Oh yeah. Moon sex. Moon sex swing. <laughs> Here's another amazing piece of equipment. 
Walk on the surface of the moon, it says. Oh boy, I want to try it! Sex wing. Gravity is weak on the moon, so I bet I could do mid-air somersaults! We're still on Earth, remember? Besides, it's connected to the ceiling. Well, at least I could jump really high! There's a sign on the wall that very clearly says, Don't jump too high! Then what good is this thing? Uh, didn't I say in the beginning, walk on the surface of the moon? Bitch. How um, dare you? Get your shit together. Uh, there is... There sh should be... Door here. What's this? A trap door? It's a trash chute. The cleaning robots throw the garbage out from the... Out from there. The robots do the cleaning? What a futuristic world we live in. I just hope they don't revolt like they do in the science fiction movies. No way. All the ro robots here are very nice. Actually, wasn't there one in Launchpad 1 corridor? We can go say hi if you want to. Uh... And then there's a danger thing here. And then the gutter. Oh, yes. what's this? There's a boopy thing here. Yes. Hey, I see something shiny down there. Let's take the cover off then. I don't know if I should be sticking my hands in high voltage cables. Ooh. Oh, what's this? It looks like a metal jelly bean. It's really small, but it's a bullet. It's only about two or three millimeters in diameter. Let's see. That would make it a caliber 10. Damn. Caliber refers to the diameter of a gun's barrel, right? <laughs> the robots in Alien Isolation politely strangle you. That politely is Politely strangle you. They are just, they're very creepy looking. Yes, but I've never heard of a .10 caliber gun before. This bullet must be for a special kind of gun. I bet if you tried firing a bullet this small with a regular sized gun, it would just fall right out. Yeah, it must have been a really small gun. I wonder how the bullet ended up here. I mean, we're in the bottom left on the south door side of the room, according to this map. That's pretty far from where Clay's body was. Maybe the police didn't think to look here. Yeah, leave it, to leave it to Detective Volbright to accidentally hand us the card we needed. Bullet was, uh, at court. I feel like this is a setup. Uh-huh. Um. Trash shoot. Add it to the records. Go back and examine Launchpad 1 door. Just about that. Mub it. Mub it. Mub it. Mub it. There we go. <laughs> See, this door is... Where's that pamphlet? Here we are. It's the door to the corridor that leads to launch pad one. We went through it earlier when we went to talk to Detective Fulbright. So I guess the security lock must be disengaged now, right? They say the corridor was filled with smoke at the time of the bombing. This thing beside the door. This must be the fingerprint recognition device. D advice, device. Which reminds me, I think Prosecutor Blackwell talked about it at the trial. The notion of a third party in the launch pad one is utterly absurd. Just to enter the area from the lounge, one must pass through a door guarded by a fingerprint recognition device. And allow me to state up front that there are precious few with the clearance to do so. Then, does this mean the bomber's prints were verified by this system? But the number of authorized personnel was supposed to be really small. Voila! Fingerprint powder! I brought it just in case something like this came up. I found it at the office. I've been just itching for a chance to use it. Aww. This Phoenix is old. Print duster. Maya, uh, not Maya, um, 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 what's her face? Oh, uh, Emma Sky. Yeah, maybe Emma left it there. Wow, way to think ahead. Now, let's just dust the fingerprint recognition device and see what we can find. You got it. Now to sprinkle some here, and a little bit there, and... 
Back in the day, we could actually foo foo the dust stop. Yeah. Let's see what we have here. Oh, we got something. Oh, it's only a only a set of prints, single set of prints. Uh, isn't that a good thing? I sure wish you could figure out whose prints these are. Although I doubt that we'll be so lucky as to get the culprit's prints on the first try. Well, I'm willing to bet that Detective Fulbright has some fingerprint database. Right, and there's the security footage of the store too. Yes, here it is. It come, it came up in the court records the the it, uh, it I'm in court today. Totally. Have that in your jacket. I am a witch. I can't do this. I'm just going. We're doing the Swedish, the Swedish version. I wish we could see the part of the footage. I would just. I wish we could see the part of the footage just after this bit. <laughs> Because that would be right before the murder, wouldn't it? Let's ask, ask the detective. With the mood he's in, he'll probably show it to us right away. Yeah, he's in almost too good of a mood today. Let's go see if we can find him again once we're done with this room. And oh, then... I don't think I turned off my uh, my screen flux. It's a little orange. Do you oh. want me to change it? The flux? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Where's the flux, Joyce? Yes. Where's the flux? The flux? The, the flux. This the flux. The flux. Then we will disable uh, the flux. Disable the flux until the sunrise. Disabling the flux. There we go. Oh, look at that. There we go. That's, that's, uh. My eyes are on birds. <laughs> and that's why I have the flux on. <laughs> so this is the fingerprint recognition device. I guess if you put your hand on this hand mark. Why? Why? Yes, when you can try! Now, to line my hand up with the outline. Don't, Athena! This thing is related to the case! Get your prints all over that, and the next thing you know, you'll be named a suspect! Ah! Uh, how can you be so cruel to a little girl like me? I'm not buying those tears, Missy. Oh. Yeah, that's much better, exactly. Yeah, I, norm I normally have the, uh, the, the, the color correction on so that at night it doesn't burn my burn eyes. Your eyes yeah. I wonder what this big knob is for. It looks like the knob on a stove. Well, it's the same shape, but I think that's where the similarities end. I mean, it's behind a glass pane. What kind of stove would require knob security like this? Well, the knob is straight up and down, so if it was a, if it was for a stove, the burner would be off. That's not that's Right. right, if it was for a stove. Still, I wonder what it's really for. Something to turn on by a knob that's not a stove? How about a rocket engine? If you had to start the engine here, the rocket would take on before you could get in. Then I guess all we can say for now is that it's a mystery knob. Oh, honey. Oh, I accidentally clicked circle. My bad, my bad. All right, that's it. And then, oh, what's this? A bullet hole here. Yeah. Or is it? I, I thought it was a. Uh, I a thought it was web? a spider web. A bright purple sky, plenty of greenery, and a tranquil lake. The idyllic scene stretches as on as far as the eye can see. It's beautiful, but it lacks some. It lacks something to make it truly captivating. Oh, I missed it. Oh, yeah. Hold on, dude. Hold on, dude. Hold on, dude. Where is it? Got a check mark, so maybe it is oh. just a. Maybe um, this is cobweb. How about here then? Uh, shiny. Launch pad one, fingerprints. Examine the button to the left. What could it be for? It is secured with a yeah, glass panel you already have. To the right, examine the remote on the left table. It's right here. Yeah. This, this, this remit. Remit. There's some kind of panel with two buttons on here. <gasps> Ooh, let me push it. Let me push it. That's the invariable principle principle of buttons. There are such things as buttons left unpushed. Boop. <gasps> ha! Shit, dude. Oh, there we go. We turned that off. Pop it, boop. Hey, the giant holographic image disappeared. Yeah. Though that side of the wall seems kind of barren without it now. Still, let's see if we let's see if we can't find anything new with the image off. And I think that's now we can see the bullet. 
Yeah, the bulk yeah. is the way more apparent before it looked like just a cobweb. There you go. Hey, Mr. Wright! Take a look at this! It looks like a bullet hole. Great find, Athena. It's pretty big. Whoever fired this shot must have been using a pretty large gun. You think so? Based on my experience, I'd say this was fired from a regular pistol. Well, whatever size it is, somebody fired a gun in here, right? Apparently. This is an, imp this is an important fact. Do you see a bullet anywhere? No. The police might have taken it, though. The bullet hole. Yes, but who is this? Phoenix is a size queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet, he's, I bet he knows the sizes from, from his experience. Uh, who's to say that the, uh... It's from this way. If it it could have been from, from behind the screen. Yeah, it could have been from behind the screen. <gasps> Did you want to be the Space Center guest, or do you want me to do it? Welcome to the Space Center guests. You're just assuming it's gender from its eyelashes. Yes, yes, I am. And look at those, look at, look at those. How fucking dare you, Joyce? How? <laughs> those movies. How that is fucking a, that is a you. femme presenting robot, okay? Doesn't mean it's a she, okay? Doesn't have to be, but. How fucking dare you? <laughs> Yikes! What in the world? My name is Ponko. P-O-N-C-O. Ponko! Are you sightseeing? Are you lost? Are you looking around? Choose one. It's a robot? Those are radar bumps. I am not a robot. I am Pongo. Psychological observation and navigation companion. P-O-M-C-O. Pongo. Oh my god, this reminds me of uh, Kevin in uh, Frontier. Oh, sorry, in Final Space. Uh, Kevin is a oh, yeah. companion droid yeah, on yeah, a yeah, prison yeah, barge. Yeah, yeah. So the prisoners don't go crazy. Uh, well, I'm glad we cleared that up. Oh, Ponko, I missed you. Huh? Do you know this thing, Athena? Oh, uh, she, uh, see, she showed us around the last time when I came here with Apollo. Oh, you're such a good girl, Ponko. That's a good girl. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy. So very happy! Wow, a guide robot. That's pretty cool. My name is Phoenix Wright. Nice to meet you. I don't know you! I don't know you! Huh? Ouch, that hurt. Oh, she has to register people she meets for the first time. Please register him, Ponko. Certainly. Commencing guest registration. Please tell me your name. His name is fine, too. His name is Phoenix. A bit over familiar, but I'll allow it. Because <laughs> he's calling me by my first name. Yeah. Which is a very more Japanese thing. This is this is kind of like a Japanese tra uh, translation from Japanese to English. With maybe a little... A little... Unknown cultural background to it. But calling people their first name... Well, I mean, also, like, she's always calling him boss. Yeah, it's true. Like, you never hear her call him Phoenix. Like... In casual conversation. In yeah. conversation. Like, I don't know if you'll hear her talk about other... Like, talk about him using his name, but it's always boss. Phoenix, please let me get a good look at your face. Oh, uh, sure. Registering. Facial reg registration sequence complete. We are now officially friends. Nice to meet you, Phoenix. <laughs> you should just give it like a terrible like inflection. It's like, we are now officially friends. Nice to meet you, Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Phoenix. <laughs> huh, this robot is pretty cute. I fuck it. <laughs> I fuck it. You made a friend, boss. It's a fuckable robot. <laughs> Isn't it great? Wouldn't you want to? Are you, are you gonna fuck it in the <laughs> in the space swing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> space sex swing. <laughs> Phoenix, Athena, allow me to guide you right this way. Oh goody! Let's go, boss. Oh, 
Oh, so go away. My, my my nieces were 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 here tonight for a late New Year's dinner, and they come down and they see the fancy the fancy microphone, the setup, and, they'll, yeah. and they're like, oh. Do you sing? And I'm like, no, I don't sing. And my brother goes, yeah, they play. What was it? They, um, they play video games. They play video games or they YouTube stream channel. or something. <laughs> they have a YouTube channel. Uh, and of course, the kids are like, oh, can we see? Can we see your videos? And then Rose's like, yeah, maybe. And they're like, absolutely yeah, not. I, pop, I popped out from a quarter like they certainly most they most certainly may not. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with some of our recent streams, they most certainly may not. Uh, and this is why, absolutely not. Yeah, they will never know what we do. Uh, never. What's your channel name? <laughs> Everyone's like, ugh, 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 do we lie? What do we do here? Oh wow, what is this place? Is is that rocket real? God. Is this is this Okamura space station? God, get me out of here! <laughs> Museum is open to the public every day of the year from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Learn about the history of our nation's space development and the Hat One Project. The rocket is just a replica, but it's the same size as the real one. That a small ass rocket then. <laughs> the Space Museum. Oh, here it is on the map. Okay, so it's on the exact opposite side of the main building from Launchpad 1. So this is on the opposite side. We've been updating our little center pamphlet. Ask me anything, anything. I will explain. You can just call me Reddit. <laughs> you can call me Mommy. <laughs> Sorry. The hat one. Okay. This is quite the place. I can't believe we get to see a rocket this close up. This is a replica of the Hat 1 that was launched seven years ago. It's exactly like the real Hat 1, inside and out. So this is a live rocket? It's everything but the live rocket. Its little brother, the Hat 2, was supposed to launch the other day. I wonder if Ponko knows why the launch was canceled. Over there is an exhibit about the launch seven years ago. Check it out. Check it out. Ooh, cool. Ooh, that's a nice little jacket. Oh, it probably plays. Spacesuits, photos, newspaper articles. I'd like to come here again on my day off. Hey, what's this a photo of? Look at all these nerds. Uh... There's Mr. Starbuck. He looks so young and so different. <laughs> he doesn't, doesn't have the uh, He doesn't have his cone shape yet. The rocket hair yeah. yet. Oh, and that's that's What is it, Athena? Is something wrong? Oh, nothing. I just thought Mr. Starbucks looked really young too. Ooh, that's is all. Somebody here she recognizes. Oh yes, yes there is. Well, it was seven years ago after all. So the young guy standing next to Mr. Starbuck is Clay Terran, the victim. Nice save, Athena. <laughs> so they were mentoring protege even way back then. And he's even got one of the staff jackets. He looks like just a regular staff member. No, Clay was still a student then. He just borrowed one of Solomon's old jackets. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Clay would have still been in high school seven years ago. Everybody looks so happy. This space museum is great. What fantastic exhibits. This area used to be Launchpad 2. That's why the only entrance is on the third floor. Wouldn't it be better if they just made a new ground floor entrance instead? Who would record that kind of information into a guide robot? 
while it was in the space, while it was in the space, <laughs> in space, the hat one launched a probe called Hope. I will probe you with Hope. <laughs> the Hope probe collected some samples from an asteroid and returned five days ago. That's what Director Cosmo said too. He told us it came back the day before Clay was killed. And here it is, the Hope Space Probe! Ooh. Huh, I think I've seen that logo somewhere before. Let's see. Oh yeah, the capsule that the victim was carrying. I think it had the same logo. I think it can be seen in the photo attached to the autopsy report. Maybe she'll give me some more info if I show it to her. Uh... Present! Present. Or actually, you could talk about the other thing That's if you fine. want. We can talk about the other thing later. Uh, what was it that we needed to uh, show her? Uh, the launch pad door, right? No, the autopsy, autopsy photo. Yeah, this one. Present. Ponko, do you recognize this capsule here in the top right? Checking registered data. It was carried inside the Hope Probe! It contained the asteroid samples, right? Yes! It was designed to store the samples gathered by the Hope Probe! It's been stored in the safe in Log Pad 1 ever since it returned to Earth! It must not be removed! It must not be removed! Exterminate! Exterminate! Oh god, it's going crazy! <laughs> Don't worry, Ponko. The people in charge already know what happened. They do? They do? I must ask them later. So the capsule that was being kept in Launch 1... Uh, so the capsule was being kept in Launch Pad 1, huh? Baby Clay was trying to carry it out safely after the explosion. The Space Center staff must have been really excited to finally get the capsule back. But it's a pity this incident occurred before they got a chance to check the contents. Well, the police took it as evidence, so they'll have to wait a little longer. Hope capsule added to the court record. <laughs> it's just full of stool, like someone just shat in it. <laughs> the, hope <laughs> the Hope Probe came back with stool. <laughs> with space stool. <laughs> Alien uh, stool. <laughs> talk to it. Talk to Punko. Punko. Talk to Punko for the launch pad. Launch pad. Payout. The way the Space Center launch pad is set up is really cool. Would you like me to tell you about it? Would you? The setup of the launch pad? Go gentle on my spiky impaired mind. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. Phoenix wants to know too. Great, now Athena's got a case of ponkoitis. Is, is it related to, uh, to- No! Hooray! <laughs> 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 I will tell you then! The rocket is built right inside the launch pad structure. When the rocket is complete, it's moved along with the rocket above the launch pad to the rails. Oh wow, that's pretty neat. And brought into position at the launch site. I was about to ask, like, why would you launch? How could you launch that near the museum and not incinerate everything around it on uh, launch? But it's on a it's on a trolley system essentially. It but it's it still up. like it's still like right there next to the. It's yeah. not like it's being no, away no. from the yeah, site. Yeah, you, you saw it. You saw it moved north from the site. Yeah, but that's still around the the. The building itself, like you have no, you're not like miles away from. Oh, we'll see. Like there's the building, there's the thing. It just went from, it just from, from went from west side to the north side. And then followed a track north. There you go. Isn't it cool? Isn't it? We used to have a big budget, so that's how we could build it all. It's very cool. A grand setup that suits an important place like the Space Center. I guess everyone is hoping for a bigger budget next year. <laughs> Myself included. I'm guessing the whole thing is operated from the control room, huh? That it is, but it can also be operated from the new command center too. Either way, the safety lock in the boarding lounge has to be in has to first be disengaged. 
before a big move like that uh i guess a big i guess a big i guess before a big move like that can be carried out there are all kinds of procedures i would love to see a launch pad being moved when's the next one scheduled for searching data all future plans have been put on hold because of the bombing and the murder huh, because of the bombing and the murder i'll bet which is perfectly understandable well, when was the last time it was moved? Searching data? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That answer isn't in my answer database. I guess Ponko can only answer certain questions. Well, we certainly learned a lot about the Space Museum. Thank you, Ponko. You explained everything very well. I love to explain. Thank you for listening. Thank you! You two are like old friends. It's hard to believe you just met recently. <laughs> it's because Ponko is so friendly. Well, what should we investigate next? Let's go for to find Detective Fulbright. We have things to ask him about with my fist. <laughs> I mean... Let's see, the security footage and the fingerprint data, wasn't it? Okay, let's go back to Launchpad 1 Corridor. See you later! Come again! Come again! And don't forget to visit the gift shop! Poor Ponko. What a Dickensian what a Dickensian life we all are what we what a Dickensian life we are all forced to lead. I mean Dickens life. Dickensian. Don't don't rag on her, she's doing her best, okay? She's doing what she's programmed to do, alright? She's doing cute robot things. Do not hurt robot feelings. I mean, her life is still better than like a vacuum robot vacuum there. Vacuum robot, all he does is vacuum. <laughs> Meet Morb Z vacuum. The same spot eternally. <laughs> hmm, what should I do? Which path is the path of just ice? <laughs> just ice. There's Detective Fulbright. He still seems to be lost, even though it's a straight corridor. Let's hope he's still in a cooperative mood as well, then. If he doesn't cooperate, then I'll just have to use my powers on him! You mean that lady in distress bit? <laughs> just diggy, just titties! <laughs> we gotta use, uh, just titties. <laughs> Alright, the butthole at the case. I mean, <laughs> bullet hole at the case. <laughs> we found a bullet hole in the wall at the crime scene. You did? Our team found that too! It was Detective Arm who fired that bullet. Detective Arm? That's right! A warning shot for the defendant! Was it really such a high threat situation that you needed to do that? I'm afraid I don't know the details. What with Detective Arm, go Arm gone and all? She's gone. Who the hell let her go? No, she died on our first trial. Candace Arm. I thought that... Oh yeah, you're right. Wait, what? Because the timeline in this game skips around yeah, a bit. Yeah, but then isn't she like... She's dead. But why is she dead now? Like, this is a recent incident, right? So... Okay, I'm... Uh, shouldn't she be alive in alive in this time frame? No, so... Is this pre-first case or post-first post case? Post-first case. Oh, okay. So, All right. so, so... Um, what's the minute? Clay... Clay was murdered. And Apollo took on the case. Yeah. And in that first part of that case, while Apollo was was the lead, um, Arm was murdered. Yeah, Arm was murdered, and the courtroom blew up. Right. Okay. Yeah. So this right? is really tight. <laughs> and then, and then immediately after, Juniper put on was put on trial for the explosion. For the explosion of the courtroom. Yeah. And, and then, then we, we found her innocent. Quit. Yeah. And then, but like. Apollo was well, beaten over the head again, and then was like, "I'm I'm gonna take a leave of absence." Um, and then it and flashes then, back to. And then uh, Apollo, uh, sorry. And then Athena is like, "Oh, poor Apollo. Um, we have to we have to finish finish this for him." And now we are. Yeah. Fair assessment. We already know Detective Cosmos will testify tomorrow. No, we already know Detective. Director Cosmos will testify, so tomorrow will all will be all about what he knows. Hey, 
see, you're pretty smart. That's exactly what we're planning to serve as the main course. I hope it goes down easy. <laughs> I see you to show him your fist of justice, I know, right? Your fist, fist of, of ju justice! Fist of justities. <laughs> Detective, we'd like to run a comparison on some prints we found in the boarding room lounge. Boarding lounge. Ah, uh, yes, I just happen to have compiled the print data of everyone related to the case. I can always just, I can always make another copy for myself, so it's all yours. Consider it a gift. This is quite a bit of data. Well, when I said everyone, I meant it. Prosecutor Blackwell said to dig deep, so that's what I did. It sure took a while, though. Oh, whoa! He got Apollo on my prints. He even got the prints for all of the robots. Oh, robots have prints? I guess when Blackwell said to dig deep, Fulbright didn't bother to ask how deep. Ah! Clay's fingerprints are here, too! I personally removed his glove during the investigation. We had to get his fingerprints to confirm his identity after all. I still can't believe you took off his glove to get his fingerprints. That seems a little bit weird, yeah. Yes, well, you can't blame me for thinking they're important to the case. There are a lot of doors that require fingerprint verification in the lounge. So depending on whose prints were we find, it can completely change the tide for both sides. Oh, well, makes sense. After all, the culprit's prints did get him past the fingerprint lock somehow. Oh, and take this picture. It might come in handy. Isn't this just a picture of your dick? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is! It's a giant wang! Wait, hold on a second. <laughs> this this seems a little weird. It kind of cuts off awkwardly. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's the second photo. <laughs> huh. Isn't this just a photo of the launch pad one door? Yep, but Prosecutor Blackwell seemed really interested in it for some reason. Huh? What's so important about this door? Beats me, but the boy could see the... Uh, but boy, could you see the gears in his head go into hyperdrive at it. Sounds like this is going to be a major point of contention tomorrow. Hey, don't forget about the print comparison, boss. Right. Uh, Detective Fulbright, do you think you could run the test for us right now? You just leave it to me. In justice, we trust. A second pick. He needs a double pull to run. <laughs> That's actually a joke from uh, Red, uh, Red Dwarf? Was it Brad Dwarf? Red, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it's like a space, English space comedy. The, the robot was just like, I was trying to like basically make my own genitals. And I wanted you to like give me uh, your opinion. And he provides him a Polaroid. He's like, well, I it looks okay, but you kind of cut it off really strange at the end. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. And he brings out a second Polaroid. And the guy's like, ah, <laughs> I see. And that always makes me laugh. <laughs> okay, here we go. Well, it looks like it was Mr. Starbuck who opened that security door. Oh. He must have opened it when they went to go aboard the went to go board the rocket. His heart must have been full of hopes and dreams for his space adventure right then. Large bed when they are look updated. All right, we got everything we needed. It's a red dwarf. Okay. You do have the red dwarf gag. Yes, that's that's the gag. <laughs> that's the gig -a gag. Uh, so you talk to him about everything. We Present did. the security camera video. Uh, autopsy, launch pad, security camera video. Uh, back present. 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 Detective, about the security footage that was taken by the boarding lounge one camera. Oh, what footage? Go ahead. Oh, oh, that footage. Go ahead and ask me anything you'd like about it. Is there any way I could see a little bit more of the part just after this? Easy as pie. I'd be glad to show you. Here we go. Okay, they step out and then uh, cut. What the fuck? It cuts out. Huh? The screen in blank. Yes, apparently the after effects of the explosion damaged the wires. So there's no footage after this point. <laughs> Why didn't you just say so from the beginning? I'm wasting my fucking time. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> hmm. 
something definitely seems to be up with you, Detective. You're unusually cooperative. Well, uh, I just figured if we work together, we will get that much closer to justice, right? But it seems like something's been really bothering you. You don't have some ulterior motive, do you? What? I don't know what you're talking about. I would never do anything like that. Oh, he lying. Oh. He lying. Why are you oh. always lying? Oh, this bitch. He lying. Why are you always lying? And of course, uh, with Phoenix, we can see the Cyclox. Yeah. Mm. It's been a while, but those are definitely Cyclox. Hmm? Did you just mouth psyched? Is that something I should be psyched about? Uh, no, no, Scythe, Scythe lock. It's a system of locks on the secrets in a person's heart. Really? You're just going to explain that? Oh, yeah, the, the gag. Uh, he turned human, got aroused by flipping through an appliance mag, uh, and then scrolling down. He didn't know what was happening, uh, so he sent up a picture that produced a second picture to put the first into perspective, to which the other crew member replied, no appliance should give you the double pull run. <laughs> no appliance should give you a double pull run. That's funny. Should give you a half chub at best. I can see when people are trying to hide those secrets by using the power of this Magatama. Presenting evidence can break those locks and reveal any secrets they're hiding. Mr. Wright, how much did they bilk you out of? How much did they bilk you out for that piece of rock? If you'd been swindled, I know some lawyers I can introduce you to. I'm more capable of representing myself, thank you very much. It isn't some kind of fraud. It really works. A friend gave it to me a long time ago. You know, you really don't have to justify yourself to yeah. me, Phoenix. <laughs> Maybe just wants to fucking flex on on uh, on Fulbright for basically telling me his his magatama from his boss is a piece of shit, right? He's like, how are you go fuck yourself, Fulbright? A woman died to give me this, okay? Fuck you! And just like, rages out. <laughs> He's like, okay. <laughs> but I guess seeing is believing. Allow me to show you. I can use the Magatama on him by touching by touching it using the X button. Yeah, that's right. Touch uh, it. Do we have the evidence Touch to, it. to caress Touch his, bottle his stones, Joyce? Gargle his stone? <laughs> rub his stones? Uh, yeah, probably. Dynamic stone stuff, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Take that! Take that! In the stones. I think you're hiding something, Detective. So why don't you just tell me about it? Hmm, what to do? Which path is the path of justice? Detective Fulbright is real is really in agony. I bet this issue uh, I bet this is the issue he's so torn torn up over justice. Justice! I really understand that's what's been bothering you, Detective. I really do. Something happened that goes against your principles, isn't that right? Uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Until the explosions occurred, everything was just fine. Is that a fact? Yep, peaceful as peaceful can be. Everything, everyone whistling a happy tune as they did their job. <laughs> Damn, dude got his stones locked up in a cage. <laughs> if you never saw more, you never saw more relaxed guard detail for a routine rocket launch. I don't think the guard detail was relaxed as you claim, as long as this still exists. Uh, evacuation report. Evac report, where is it? Despite being, yeah, despite security. There was more security. Like always quick high and by because spoilers. Okay, gamer chat. Yes, thank you for coming by regardless. Before the explosion, uh, before the explosions, what was, uh, what was supposed to happen? Uh, before the explosions, what's, what was supposed to happen here was a rocket launch. Posture check. Uh, uh, hydrations. And your security and was so, and yet security was so tight. Even they brought in a special task force. I'd hardly describe that as a relax, relaxed guard detail. Her Megan! Her Megan! <laughs> now hold on just one moment. The entire nation had their eyes on this extremely important rocket launch. That's why I was called in on a special security detail. As versatile as you are, I can certainly believe that's true. But I say it's very strange that this person would be part of that detail from the outset. Uh, why would you have a uh, Candace arm there? A, a bomb. A detective uh, specializing in bomb cases. Take that! Take that! Detective arm specialized in bomb cases. The fact that she was here on hand 
means that you people knew there was a possibility that a bombing would occur. Hey, Morgan, you got me, Mr. Right! <laughs> yeah, that's right, I broke your locks. Your face! Your ugly face! <laughs> <laughs> I broke. Oh, look at his little. You've been voice. broken. <laughs> I must break you. Ooh. <laughs> All right, I concede. You win. It's just as you say. A few days before the launch, they were warned about a potential bombing. The plan to launch went ahead in spite of the threat. Rip chastity cage. <laughs> Oh, can I do Athena's voice? Uh... How about why? <laughs> what were they planning to do if someone got hurt or killed? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. The decision to move forward wasn't exactly just, was it? How was the warning delivered? <laughs> By phone and directly to Director Cosmos. But the police department instructed everyone to keep it under wraps. That's a big thing to keep quiet about. No wonder you were so upset. But it's not only that. I've been distraught by Prosecutor Blackwell as well. Prosecutor Blackwell? Well, as his handler, I'm sure you've gotten a lot. Of, I'm sure you have a lot of difficulties. I've brought caramel pecan fudge. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. That's not it. It's a question of justice. I've been wondering about why he's allowed to stand in court. The reason he's still prosecuting? Detective Fulbright, please tell us everything you know. Prosciutto Blackwell. Tell me about Prosciutto Blackwell. Well, talking to you folks about it would definitely be breaking the rules. Never mind that. What are rules but things to be broken, right? Okay, that's not something a lawyer should be saying. <laughs> Well, to tell you the truth, having a prisoner act as a prosecutor is highly irregular. Yeah, no shit. I think we guessed that much. So why is it being allowed? I've been wondering and wondering about it. So you weren't told why either, huh? No, no. I guess the order came from a pretty high up the ladder. Yeah, it would have, it would have, have to. But Prosecutor Blackwell once told me. The hunt I've been on, oh sorry, the hunt I've been on for the Phantom of the sev of Seven Years Past continues even still. Seven years past? A phantom, huh? And not one of the friendly variety either, I gather. Excuse this cat, and he's looking, he's looking for snicks. You want a snick? No, don't you. Do no, you're not allowed to eat milk anymore. You're not a kitten anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, clip that. Oh, man. Clip it. Just, uh, just a note to self. Clip it. <laughs> This phantom of seven years past, any idea who or what he was talking about? Not a clue. But he seems to think that this phantom is behind this whole incident somehow. Wait a minute. He thinks they there may be a connected, uh, there may be a, he thinks they may be connected to this case? Yep. This case has too many similarities to what happened seven years ago. Oh, what happened For seven starters, years? that case happened right here at this very space center too. And in both incidents, a threat was issued via telephone. So that's why Prosecutor Blackwell thinks this incident is the work of the Phantom. Well, that's not the entire reason. I mean, if you want to talk about seven years ago, that's when Prosecutor Blackwell was found guilty of murder. That messy case is what started the whole dark age of the law. So as you uh, so you see that uh, so you see how this phantom and Prosecutor Blackwell's conviction might be related. Yeah, I can see why he'd think that. This incident in the phantom, 
Not to mention Black Quill's past. It's almost inconceivable that they would come to a head here, except we've had seven different cases where that, where that, where that happened, so... You know what, whatever. I'm used to it. This might sound crazy, but... Call me maybe? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Prosecutor Blackwell can't possibly believe Mr. Starbuck is the phantom person, right? I mean, he was acting all kinds of strange during the last trial and all. The prosecution appears to be uh, the prosecution appears to be ready as well. Silence. Not yet. I'm not quite ready yet. Hmm. No, I doubt he thinks Mr. Starbuck is his fact, but I do get the feeling that he thinks the defendant has dized him, which is why he's acting so impatient. He's got a personal grudge against Mr. Starbuck, and that's not real justice. <gasps> I've always trusted in Pres Prosecutor Black Widow's judgment until now, but this time I'm just so overwrought about it all. If he's lost his ability to think rationally, I'm afraid it might lead to a false conviction. I've never seen Detective Fulbright so tormented. This must be why he's so cooperative. Don't worry. That's exactly that's exactly what we the defense lawyers are working to prevent. I feel bad for Prosecutor Blackwell, but I'm not going to be rooting for your team this time. But don't tell him that. You have to promise me you won't. Detective Fulbright. I guess I was wrong about you. I swore to reform Prosecutor Blackwell and make him a valued member of society again. So I can't just sit by and watch him give in to his emotions and tear the defendant apart. You are the only ones who can stop him in court. You really care and want what's best for Prosecutor Blackwell, don't you, Detective? Leave the courtroom to us. It's not like we want a guilty verdict either. I was hoping you'd say that. I'm really grateful to the two of you. To show my thanks, I'll give you another bit of information. It's about the eyewitness. I saw her hanging around the space center entrance a little while ago. Really? Now let's go find her, Mr. Wright. Thanks, you two. I feel a lot better now that I've been able to get that off my chest. I'm going to work extra hard to find that perfect piece of evidence for you. Injustice we trust on three. One, two, three. Injustice, Injustice we, we trust. trust. Okay, later. <laughs> and there he goes. Wait, were we supposed to say Injustice we trust back there too? I mean, I did. I don't know about you. Let's see to that witness now. All right. The space center entrance it is. Just gonna sneak in some ice cream in now. Ah, can I use some of the ice cream? Yes, I want some chocolate ice cream. The witness must be around here somewhere. It's a dude bot. Uh-oh. Don't tell me the witness is a robot. Hello. Come over here. Hello. Hello. Are you sightseeing? Are you lost? Are you... I am Clonko. Shall I guide you? I don't know why, but this robot is kind of freaking me out. Oh. Is this a new guy? Oh, oh damn! Ooh, hey, damn. you're not supposed to be. Give me that old Nate Chan voice. <laughs> what? You're not supposed to be running around with him. Oh, sorry. For some Again, <laughs> I've had it with you, hunk of junk. I love that judo chop. Okay, welcome back, hunk of junk. You don't know how close you came. If you don't snap out of it, I was going to put you on the curb on trash day. 
He's just like, this is a Dami Mommy vibes right here. Clonko's just like, just like, just slave. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing works better than a 4.5, 42.5 4, degree karate chop. <laughs> Sorry, mommy, mommy, Sorry, mom. mommy. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> That's pretty specific. Uh, excuse me, but are you the one who witnessed the murder? Oh, uh, and I'm Phoenix Wright, the lead attorney for this case. Uh, how do you do? Mommy, I mean, <laughs> mommy, I mean, Big mommy. Big shot lawyers, huh? I'm Aura Blackwell. Whoa, Blackwell sisters hot! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh damn! I'm a researcher developing robots here at the Cosmos Space Center. Blackwell? Could she be? And this good-for-nothing robot is named Hunk of Junk. Complaining. Your model number is Ponko 2. But, Miss Hora, everyone calls me Clonko. Quit your squawking already. Oh my gosh, lobotomizing this poor kid in front of us. Like, oh, I don't know if I should be watching this. No! What are you doing? No! Don't! There. I bet you won't be talking back now. Oh my god, this is... Wow! Wow, so she just straight up lobotomized. Tommy, yeah, like, Tommy energy. <laughs> oh god. So one is the weave and the other's a robot nerd. What a pair of sibs, yeah. I will obey completely. Yikes, I better watch what wires I cross with this one. Oh, I bet you'll obey now. Mommy, I mean, mommy, I mean, mommy, I mean, mommy, mommy, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Your last name. Your last name is Blackquill. Do you have a relative in the legal profession? You are correct. Simon Blackwell, who used to be a prosecutor, is. Shut up. Only speak when I order you to speak. Simon is my little brother. You know him? Uh, yes. We met him in court a few times. Right, Athena? She's just like, I don't know about the Dami Mom energy. <laughs> what a dull creature. Has her switch been turned off? I can always turn her back on. Yes, please. I mean, no. Yes, no. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh I've got a, like, a half chub right now. It's killing me. No. Athena <laughs> being shy? This is new. Oh, yeah. I heard he was prosecuting again, despite being a prisoner. Why doesn't he just stick to solving disputes among inmates in prison, right? <laughs> hey, what do you think, hunk of junk? Miss Aura, that hurts. I'm asking you a question. Why don't you answer me? Useless hunk of junk. But Miss Aura, uh told you to never talk back to me. You're more, you're worth more as scrap. Robot abuse, hawk attacks? Blackwell family life must sure be interesting. Well, do you have any questions? How do you fit in those pants? Wait, mm. <laughs> of course you do. You're a lawyer. It's not like I'm on Simon's side or anything. I just want to get this over with. Donk. Oh god, Clonko. <laughs> oh, you poor bastard. <laughs> so, you're the person who witnessed the incident? That's right. I was on the fourth floor of the main building, on the robotics lab. The explosion disabled the elevators. So I lowered my emergency ladder like the detective... Like the detective leading the evacu evacuation told me to. But it was such a pain. Why couldn't have they come have used ladders in the other rooms? It must have been a very troubling experience. Probably best just to humor her here. 
then, as I passed by the third floor boarding lounge, boarding lounge one window on my way down, I saw the crime as it happened. And that's about it. So you saw the crime as it happened, and that's about it. I see. Wait, what? You saw it being committed? There's no time just to nod off and there's no time just to nod and repeat. So you saw it into the third floor lounge. The very scene of the crime. That's right. There's a small window on the right hand side of the room. I looked through that from the outside. The room was pitch black, but I saw a shady figure holding a lighter in their left hand. And a knife in their right. That must have been the culprit. Did you see who that person was? Of course not. The power was out on that floor then, and there was only that tiny window. I, I see. But you did witness the movement of the murder. Yes. I saw the figure with the lighter raise their knife and... <laughs> It happened at precisely 10 a.m. Did you witness anything else? Did the killer have any distinguishing features? I already told you, it was pitch black in there. Although, I did notice that the lighter the, per that the, lighter the person had in their left hand had a pretty ornament on it. It looks like a planet. It was blue, like a little Earth emblem. They had a good- they had good taste in knickknacks anyway. An earth emblem on the lighter. I'd better remember that. We got her statement. Thank you for your statement. We'll definitely prove Mr. Starbucks innocent with it. <laughs> yeah, right. I won't hold my breath. Pardon me? Oh, did I hurt your feelings? Sorry, I just detest lawyers. That's all. Wait, what don't you like about lawyers? It's just an instinct of dislike. But don't feel bad. I hate prosecutors even more. That didn't make me feel any better, actually. Like, why does she say that while she's cradling that gun? It's like, I... <laughs> why do you hate lawyers so much? Little thing from my past. God, I'd give anything to be that robot now. <laughs> the whole legal system is meaningless in the first place. I certainly don't agree. I mean, people are imperfect. They lie. They're influenced by silly emotions. You can't expect such imperfect creatures to uphold a reasonable system of law. L I like robots much better. Even sad sacks like this one. Hey, you! Oh, God. Look alive there! This is very Dommy Mommy vibes right now. <laughs> yes, yes, here I go. I am the ultimate robot. I can operate a vacuum and heat down pressure. Robot will roll in time for my throw! <laughs> All right, that's enough out of you. You're getting a little carried away. Okay, that, that thing sped really fast, so I had to, like, <laughs> I had to, like, read it and, like, say it really quick. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, I likes robots much better. At least you can make them any way you want them. I know this one can satisfy me. <laughs> Unlike humans with their petty emotions and constant worries. I have six different levels of vibration. He's <laughs> <laughs> like happy feeling. Like... <laughs> How can you say such things? Feelings? Feeling emotions? Worrying about the things we care about? That's what makes us human! Well, the girl finally talks, and she starts with a speech! That's what makes us human? You mean getting angry and snorting like that? Irrational thought. That's what separates humans from animals. Unfortunately, your reasoning capabilities are more akin to that of a clever little monkey. But that's nothing to be ashamed of. It must be nice to have such a simple mind. Can I punch her, boss? 
Get a hold of yourself, Athena. <sighs> Humans certainly are absurd. I said you were clever, didn't I? Poor thing. Tell me, with people like you in charge, how could I possibly trust the legal system, hmm? Ooh, spooky. So she distrusts not only lawyers and prosecutors, but the whole legal system. What in the world happened to this woman to make her so bitter? Even if somebody important to, to me was killed, I would never wish to see their killer brought to trial. Because I'd much rather kill them myself. Ooh, sexy. <laughs> you can't be serious. Mm -hmm. That thing you're wearing around your neck. Oh, oh, uh, this. Around Athena's neck? Does she mean widget? Oh, I get it. Well, well. Her Royal Highness has returned to her castle at last. Her royal what? Is she talking about Athena? By the way, I heard the rumors. Our director is going to be the star witness in court tomorrow, right? Director Cosmos. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you poor things. You'd better be careful. That old man is a big liar and a huge braggart. What? He might seem like a big wig, but the center has all kinds of problems. He has a lot of skeletons in his closet. But it's your problem, so why should I care? <laughs> what? That's it? No friendly tips? No good luck, guys? Just splendid. I'll leave you to your woes. Come on, hunk of junk. Oh, poor guy. Just to reach right into Just his brain. Just constantly lobotomizing this poor guy. <laughs> it's sad to me that she doesn't believe in our legal system anymore. She must have had a very bad experience to make her feel that way. Are you alright, Athena? You seem very down. I can't believe she just said all those things! Wow, she's really upset. Has she been trying to let it show all this time? Well, I guess it's not all that surprising. You heard about fabricated evidence and false indictments and all the, on the news all the time. You mean that whole dark age of the law nonsense? I'm so sick of hearing about that. <laughs> no, Rashi, you have Joyce. I will be that robot right now. <laughs> Joyce is like, Joyce and I gotta go to bed. She's gonna be just like, <laughs> like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> exterminate, exterminate. <laughs> that should probably be his voice now. I'm gonna give him the, uh, then the extermin, then a uh, that Dalek voice when he never goes, when he goes haywire. Well, all we can do is believe in what we're doing. Yeah, you're right, boss. I agree. Maybe it's time we went back to see Mr. Starbuck. Good idea. We should tell him about the bullet and Miss Blackwell's statement. All right then. Next stop, the detention center. <sighs> My lawyers are here. Must be bad news. Hey, not necessarily. We found a new witness. A researcher saw the moment of the murder through the lounge window during her escape. Really? So they're gonna let me go? Unfortunately, it was dark, and she couldn't identify the person. Oh, I should have known. My stars never aligned just right, too. But we got a lead, too, Mr. Starbuck. The murderer had a lighter with an Earth emblem on it. A lighter with an earth emblem? Oh! D did you remember something? Yep, I sure did. Just a little bit, though. Anything at all that would be a help? Uh, anything at all would be a help. So please tell us what you remembered. Oops. Don't want to leave. I want to pack. 
<laughs> please let please tell us what you remember. But first, I gotta go back to the museum. <laughs> just, just leave. I thought I was unconscious the whole time, but now I remember I woke up for a few brief moments. That, that's huge! Do you remember seeing anything? A lighter. I saw the flame of a lighter floating in the darkness. Good, good. What else did you see? What was nearby? I was definitely boarding the lounge, so it must have been after Clay carried me there. In the light from the in the light of the flame I saw a dark shadow flickering. A dark shadow. That must have been the third party we've been looking for. Thank you, Mr. Starbuck. You've been more than helpful, you know. You've been more help than you know. If we can prove there was this third person at the scene and that they were the real killer, then you'll be cleared of all suspicion. The key will be whether or not we can identify the third person in court tomorrow. At least we have something to go on now, and that's a big plus. I should probably tidy the evidence up a little bit before someone makes mis uh, before someone mistakes me for a hoarder. Irrelevant evidence were tightened up. Now that we have a glimmer of hope, I'm st suddenly starving. Why don't we go back to the office and treat ourselves to a big celebration in advance? For someone who's high, <laughs> for someone who's highly empathetic, you can be surprisingly unsympathetic. <laughs> As an empath. <laughs> I feel like there's something wrong here, but I don't actually care. <laughs> starving for justice, just ice. <laughs> Oh, Trucy. So cute. So you found your strategy for tomorrow's trial, huh? Good for you, Daddy. Well, it's one step forward anyway. Hopefully it'll give us a fighting chance in court. As long as we can find out who this third person is. <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> now, let's get let's get something to eat. I'm starving. My vote is for Eldoon's noodles. That's a throwback to the other uh, Apollo, uh, to Apollo Justice, right? Yeah, Paul Justice had Eldoon's noodles. The old man with the noodle shop. Yes. Eldoon's noodles. I'm gonna crash. Okay, well, we'll All see right. you later. Good night. Uh, we should be done We should be soon. done this, and then we'll go into, um, we'll go into the trial little, next week. Yeah. yeah. Oh! Apollo! Oh, shit, it's our boy. Oh, he's gangsta. He's got the coat of his brother. He got his coat of his best friend on. What are you doing here? I didn't think the clinic was ready to release you yet. My wounds are fine, and I'm done lying around. It's our himbo. Apollo, you're supposed to be in bed. Leave the case to us. We'll take it from there. Thanks, but that's not an option. Not for me. Apollo. Oops. Fuck off. <laughs> <Just> leaves. leaves. <laughs> You shouldn't underestimate your injuries, Apollo. And I don't want you overdoing it. I'm fine. I'm not in pain anymore. Besides, they just gave me an IV at the clinic. I'm not in physical pain, but emotionally I'm a wreck. <laughs> an IV isn't a cure-all, ma mummy man. Anyway, just tell me how the case is going. Have you guys made any progress? A suspicious figure was spotted at the scene. We think they might be the real killer. A suspicious figure, huh? Right. I thought you'd be happier than that. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm happy. But I fully intend to see Clay's murderer apprehended. Absolutely nothing will get in the way of that. Super Superstorious. Clay was your best friend, right, Apollo? That's right. Best friend since junior high. Sounds like me and Junie. So what was Clay like? Well, he was full of compassion and energy, and he had a really loud voice. If the two of you did voice training together now, I bet you'd break a few windows. He punished Apollo. <laughs> Best friends. They were roommates. They were roommates. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I bet you're right. It seems like only yesterday Clay was a guy who lived for his dreams. We used to talk about it a lot. 
he was going to be an astronaut and me a lawyer. We, we talk well into the night, and even then, we never grew tired of it. Oh, yes, they are They're best totally roommates, friends. Yeah. They were best friends. <laughs> Apollo, uh, about that jacket. Yeah, you can't say they weren't a thing. Come on. Oh, they be fucking. They be fucking. Come on. Look, at this. this is a man in mourning. Oh, it's Clay's. I knew it. It's a special jacket that was only issued to members of the Hat Project. Exactly, there is no heterosexual explanation for this. He was finally able to get one of his own once he was selected for the Hat 2 project. He... He always looks so proud wearing it. But just when his dreams... Are, uh, just... Uh, something blah blah blah, like, Damn it, it's not fair! <laughs> for some reason it's been on, oh, sorry, my bad. Huh. Apollo, I hope you don't try and carry the burden all alone. I guess we're both unlucky. My own debut was a disaster. Well, I guess you're right. Yeah, I guess you're right on some level. That trial a year and a half ago wasn't the smoothest of wasn't the smoothest of starts. That was a rough time for me, but Clay refused to let me quit. You're fine, he'd say. Don't give up. It was the right. It was right during his screening exams too. I couldn't have become a full-fledged full-fledged lawyer without him. That you're fine of his is why I'm still standing here today. You're fine, huh? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I am fine. You're you're fine, and I'm fine. Were like your catchphrases, weren't they? <laughs> Something like that. Sure brings back memories. When we were in junior high, Clay's mom passed away in an accident. But he wouldn't show his sadness to anyone. One night, I found him crying all alone in the schoolyard court courtyard. Oh, do I need to clo do you want to do Clay's voice? Hmm. Mom, mom, get away, Apollo! Don't come over here. <laughs> Clay, listen to me. You, don't, I don't have a mother either. Huh? I always think everybody else has a mom, so I am why am I the only one? But you know, when I start feeling that way, I yell at the top of my lungs. I haul out, I'm fine! And then you know what? I start to feel like maybe I really will be do I really will be fine. Apollo Justice is fine! Okay, Clay, now it's your turn. Um okay. Clay turn is is fine! There you go. Now we're both fine. <laughs> we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. <laughs> well, what are you laughing about? <laughs> See, we're fine. You laughed first. <laughs> I'm fine. You're fine. We're both fine. <laughs> Apollo. There we go. We're fine. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> Apollo would bottle up his feelings. <laughs> like a man. Oh, no. Oh, man. And when you say it loud, when you say it loud, it really starts to feel real. And as long as you don't give up, you can keep fighting. That's what we believed. As long as you don't give up. Wasn't there somebody else who said something similar? If I give in to my fear, I'll never find the truth. So long as I don't give up, I can keep up the fight. Clay called Mr. Starbuck his mentor and looked up to him. I wonder if I can be a good role model for my staff, like Mr. Starbuck. Uh, sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'll be taking a leave of absence. What? Wait, what do you mean by a leave? You're really serious. Can you at least give me a reason why? When I put Clay's jacket on, I swore to him that I would catch him, I would catch his killer myself. But that's our goal too. I agree with Athena. We should work together to find the truth. The truth, huh? That's a noble cause. But what if the truth you seek and the truth I seek 
turn out to be different. I... I'm not sure I follow. What are you saying, Apollo? Are you saying the ends justify the means? Yeah. I'm going to catch the person responsible for taking my friend's life in my own way. Take good care of Mr. Starbuck for me. Now I must be going. Goodbye. Ooh, he's going dark side. And I can know. <laughs> goodbye. Did he just say goodbye? I sensed a lot of seething anger and hatred coming from him. And also suspicion. <laughs> uh, he's not walking out on us like this. I'm going to talk some sense into him. And hydrate. Oh, hydrate. Eh. Mm. Eh. Eh. Okay, okay. Hold on, Athena. Apollo can't believe what... Uh, no. Apollo can believe what he wants, but I believe he's wrong. Even if we take different paths, the truth we arrive at should be the same. I think the quicker we solve this cake... Cake? <laughs> the quicker we solve this case, the better it will be for Apollo. Athena, he lost his boyfriend. Have some tact. <laughs> He's hurting right now. <laughs> right in the Coco Rose. In his Coco Rose. <laughs> yeah, you're right, boss. I mean, like Phoenix said, you, for an empath, you are surprisingly unsympathetic. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know what he's feeling. I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. That's enough for one day. Make sure you're ready for tomorrow's trial, okay? If you were here right now, Apollo would say, I'm fine. Everything is fine. I just hope things really do turn out fine tomorrow. Dun, dun, dun! Yeah! Yeah, there we go. We're gonna pop a save really quick here. And then we're going to call it a night. Thank you, everybody, so much for coming by to this lovely Bad Boy Stub sesh here on Sunday on the Daring Player Squad channel. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you want to see more from our previous playthroughs and our previous Bad Boy Stubs, uh, we have a YouTube channel that you can go and there's a whole bunch of archive footage from those, uh, from those streams. Um... Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and TikTok coming out. Uh, yeah. Let us know what your favorite clips are so we can start uploading them and share that with the world. See if you can bring in some new folk and start growing the channel. We hit a thousand recently and we're really jazzed about it. Uh, we're working uh, We're working on getting uh, some preliminary ideas out on what to get for... Uh, on what to get for uh, merchandise so we can start selling those out and maybe we'll do a little bit of a raffle or a draw we'll see what goes on uh, after that uh, in the meantime I hope you all keep happy and healthy and you uh, you know have a good night uh, my name is Rashi I'm Joyce we will see you uh, next week for bad voice dubs and Saturday for our team streams um, what's up uh, no Okay, that's it. Uh, hopefully, I'll also be able to get um, the, the little little bots here to do some cool stuff. I've been just working around them when I have spare time, uh, while also trying to like slowly rebuild the computer so it doesn't crash, which seems to be working so far. So let's just hope that keeps up for now, and we can prolong uh, any needs for additional uh, parts. But in the meantime, if you have some months to donate to to make sure that this stream goes well and smoothly, um, feel free to throw in a couple dollars. Uh, if you want, uh, but your love and attention is really what we want. So thank you so much. Um, Mecha Claude, uh, Gamer Chad, uh, who else was in here today? Was in the chat today. The, sh the chat, uh, Brendan, who Brent or, or Miyuki Obama alum, who uh, already has signed off uh, for the night. Thank you so much. How do I view? I don't know, Joyce. Joyce, Joyce. 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 And uh, Paul Dettard, uh, Dettard for his 40-month uh, 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 subscription. Subs. Congrats and thanks. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. All righty. All righty. Yeah. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye